you mentioned going from 30 team members to 70 mm -hmm. in one year. So yep. fantastic. We got 40 yeah. more people, it's 40 awesome. more sets of hands, but training everybody and yeah. holding on to the culture and the values. Oh, that's a big one, yeah. What has that been like? It requires good managers, first off. Um, if you don't have good managers, if you don't have a good onboarding process, you are screwed. Um, which in some departments, some departments of the companies are more, of the company are more solidified than others with management or with onboarding procedure, manufacturing. The job has been figured out. Been what is it? You it have different years. onboarding for different departments. Each we do. One has, okay. We do. We have the general paperwork, legal, and healthcare, and you know, all that stuff. But once you go to the department, it is a different process for each. So, like, I just hired a new guy in my department. I'm over. So I'm the CEO of the company. I'm also the marketing director, so I run all the marketing operations. I'm also the guy who designs and picks most of the products we sell, which I don't know what you would call that, product designer. Procurement, maybe? Yeah, or and I have a procurement vetting? guy who does okay. all the dealer agreements okay. and stuff. So I'm doing three jobs right now. You could probably argue four, but that's... <laughs> you need one more thing to do. Yeah, and I don't have an assistant yet, and that doesn't help either. Dude! So, yeah, I know. Are you serious? I know. I actually talked to Dave about that. And was we like, got to hey, talk. Yeah. I no, need, you got to have an I assistant. Need one. Yeah, I've been I've been told by people in the company I'm not allowed to do certain things it will until I have one. It will multiply your capacity. I want to clone myself, but I think there might be ramifications for that. An so. assistant does that. I mean, I it really need does. Many. Because think about how many things are you doing that are administrative in nature. That if you had a right arm that was just like, hey, I got that. Let me take that off your plate. Yes, it's a huge. It's fantasy land, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm actually yeah. surprised you've gotten as big as you have. And haven't made that higher, which is good news because as soon as you do, like, yeah, oh, gonna, I'm, I can't wait. Double. I can't wait. Um, that's okay. And, so you're wearing a lot of hats, uh, Benny. Uh, but so and you talked about onboarding in your department. Yeah. So I just got a new guy in my department, and um, the onboarding in my department is very different than others because we're in, I he's our armorer, so I'm having to teach him. Hey, here's all the guns we have. Here's all the equipment. An armorer. We have. Yeah, we have our own like selection of weapons and like he holds the keys to the armory. Like what's much, the armorer yeah. do? So he runs. Uh, we have an FFL. We're in 0702. We can manufacture machine guns, suppressors. We can do Wait, whatever. FFL, we, sorry. Uh, federal firearms license, okay. unconstitutional laws, guns. They don't like us having stuff, whatever. So we have that. All the nice paperwork, taxes to the government, the ATF. And um, he basically runs the books, compliance, makes sure, we're not, make sure, make sure we're not breaking the law. I also have a substantial amount of weapons I have accumulated over the past six years in my own research that I I've bet. paid for because personal education. So he has to manage those, uh, gotcha. all the lasers, optics, scopes, uh, all of our ammunition, our magazines. So I shoot uh, in 2019, I shot 100,000 rounds. Uh, for the year. 100,000 um, rounds. Well, I shoot a lot for my job. Oh, and that goes into the CEO job too, is shooting. So I shot, it was 90, 100,000 rounds. Uh, 2020, I had to drop it. It was like 50 or 60. This year, it'll probably be about the same, 50 or 60. So I'm on the range a lot. twice a week. And I'm shooting yeah. a lot, training a lot. But and, that's a uh, lot of your videos and stuff too. I mean, you're it's doing- It's part of the job. Yeah. yeah. But originally, 2018, 2017, a lot of it was just me figuring stuff out. I had to learn. I had to mm. teach myself shooting- um, now I do contract training for people in the military and law enforcement, which is pretty cool. You know, that someone who can become a, a self-taught shooter can develop essentially curriculum and then can get clients from, you know, high level units who can come in, get some of that, it's learn really how to shoot cool. better. It's yeah. Cause cool. it, I mean, you'd expect it to be the other way around that exactly. they'd be teaching those courses, exactly. but they're coming to you. But the interesting thing that people don't realize about SOCOM is shooting for them is uh, special operations command. Uh, shooting for them is 1%. 99% of the job is all their other duties. Hmm. So they generally uh, outsource their shooter shooting instructors, and they're usually civilians, competition shooters, stuff like that. Hmm. So I get to do some of that on the side, which is like my fourth hat, I guess. Um, but in the process, I'm shooting a lot, on the range a lot. So the armor has to manage that. And I'll be like, hey, I've got these guns. I need them zeroed. I need these optics put on them, blah, blah, blah. He'll go and you know build them out. So I've been onboarding him, and that's a lot of education on the arsenal that we have. Here's what we've got. Here's what you need to know. Here's what kind of night vision we have. Here's all the helmets. Here's what I need done. Here's what I'm looking for. You're here to free our department up. You're here to work with the video guys, building them gear to take photos of, so I don't have to do it. So he's sort of assisting me, and he's not my assistant. He's assisting me yeah. in roles. But his onboarding is very different than someone making holsters gotcha. or somebody in shipping because mm -hmm. uh, he's in a support role within marketing, not – in the actual like flow of production and shipping. So where do you fit? I mean, you've, you're wearing all those hats and then you've got all these, me, you know, managers, yep. le leaders, department heads. Mm -hmm. What is your time allocation spent with them, mentoring them as mm -hmm. leaders versus doing all the tactical stuff? Yeah. Well, so 
a lot of my time is meetings now. I'm uh-huh. not able to do stuff as much. Um, I generally work from, I wake up whenever, depending on what time I go to bed. I go straight to work at home. I have a home office because I don't even have an office at work. Don't have my own like room. Not yet. Uh, CFO gets one. I don't have one. So I work from home, which is nice. Got my big, powerful, fancy computer and all the monitors and stuff. Work from home, go in. And then it's literally, as soon as I walk in the door, people come to me Yeah. or I go to them. And so it's I may off. have a plan for go to the armory, check on these things, check in with the media guys, check on this video we're editing. But as soon as I walk in, it's, hey, I got this procurement thing. You want to sign off on this company? Yeah, shipping thing, uh, R&D thing, new holster, something, blah, blah, blah. Look at this. Um, so a lot of it's just kind of spur of the moment. It's not in Outlook. It's not in our calendar system. Um, but we do have days like month, yesterday, it was meetings from 1030 all the way to six. I had just had, in Outlook, I'm just in the conference room, new meeting. Uh, in top of the hour, new people come in. Some people stay. We talk, keep talking about whatever. Um, Death by Meeting is obviously a book that we're reading we talk about a lot. That's a good one. We had yeah. to fix our meeting stuff. We had a lot of just mindless talking and rabbit trails. Um, so we had to fix some of our systems, have bullet points, action points right at the end, keep them short, as short as can be, have creative meetings separate, uh, separate our strategic meetings from our tactical yeah. meetings. Yeah. So our strategic meetings are on Monday, me with my uh, business partners, and then uh, our tactical meetings are at other times, fixing issues, transition meetings, stuff like that. It's a lot of meetings now. It's a lot of at least half of my time is now devoted to checking on departments, giving them what they need, whether it's vision or it's just just knowledge. Like, oh yeah, this company. It's really over the here. evolution as you scale. Yeah, and it becomes your job description because it's communication. Yep, it's not because it's meetings. Yeah, but it's, it's you know cum- communication People and skills. connecting stuff. is the thing that mm-hmm. CEOs really have to do as as they build the thing as it they is. grow. And that's kind of, and and so the, the sticky spot I'm in right now is. Not only am I the guy who's kind of running between departments and communicating, here's what's going on, here's where we're at, here's what's up. And our CFO does a lot of that too, which is awesome. I'm also kind of the figurehead of the company as far as like the the marketing. You're kind of a personality. Uh, It's personality, yeah. yeah. And so the issue with that is I have to keep doing that. I have to keep broadcasting on Twitch, Instagram, YouTube. Um, And then I also have to keep producing the just the the unlive non broadcast media Instagram photos videos educational content some of that took a backseat last year I mean it had to so I'm in a weird spot where it's I'm trying to be a full time CEO but I also kind of have to be a full time personality and I've got to document what I'm doing what I'm thinking what I'm talking about and uh, that's very tricky right now figuring out the best way to do both so that's tough an assistant will help though. 